Okay, so the next task is to create a user control and use that as the data template. So we'll rip out um, everything that we did here and actually in the process we'll fix it and make it look better, right? So uh, to get started here, let's, um, let's go ahead and select the project and then go over to the project menu and select uh, add new item and we want to choose a user control and we're going to call this the news item control you can call it anything you want news item control good all right and inside of the news item control uh, for the most part I'm just going to grab everything out that I did here so the grid control X and over paste it over the grid in the news item control.xaml. So that's the one of the first steps that we'll need to take. Uh, the next thing that we'll need to do is uh, to reference that control. So let's go ahead and I think what we do here is just uh, local news item control, right? All right. Then I think what we're going to have to do in order to continue to use the X bind is we have to make some changes to this. So first of all, let me go to the code behind for the news item control. And you remember there were two things that we needed to do here. Uh, first of all, we need to do something like this: public uh, model dot news item news item. And uh, we'll just do a getter on this, right? So get, and we'll return this dot data context as model dot news item. And that was all very templated. We you can pull that directly from the cheat sheet. Uh, then we just needed to uh, handle the data context changed event. And we'll do this little lambda here. And tell the bindings on, on the, uh, the bindings that we have inside of our XAML to update themselves whenever the data context changes. All right, so then back here in the news item control, what we'll need to do is to um, set the X bind to news item dot image and news item dot headline and dot subhead and dot state line. Great. And also while we're here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fix the alignment issues. So in this headline text block, I'm going to go relative panel dot align topic panel. Uh, there we go. Equals true. And I'm going to make the font size a little bit larger, at least initially. And we'll turn on text wrapping. I don't think I told you to do this, but we're going to need that. Let me go ahead and put all this on separate lines so you can easily see it here on inside the viewable area. All right, so the next item, the subhead, we'll set it as the relative panel dot below the headline text box. Oh, I didn't give this a name. So let's give that the name. Headline text box. So we should be able to do this now. Great. I'm going to set its text wrapping as well to wrap. And then finally, this bottom date line, I'm going to put that align at the bottom. So relative panel align bottom with the panel equals true. I'm going to set the font size something kind of small here to like 10. And that should be all we need to do there. All right. So at least that should space things out nicely. Let's see if this works. If I've forgotten a step in this process. I forgot something. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
So I forgot a end of line statement. This is kind of an odd line of code to write. It's all in one line. We're used to seeing things on different lines. So I'll forgive myself if you do. Yay. Hey, it, uh, it works. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to do something here. Uh, let me resize this window. It's a little ungainly. All right, and we get the scroll bar. So that's good. Awesome. You know what? I think we need is the background color for this to be the light gray. So let me go to this uh, to the main page.xaml. In here in the grid view, you know, set the background equal to a uh, light gray. And let's see what that looks like. All right, you definitely have some padding issues in this guy inside of each of these items. So let's go ahead and um, add some padding around that relative panel in particular. So news item control. Find the relative panel. Here I'm going to set the margin and I'll set it 10 on all sides. That should uh, that should work. That's a little bit better. Okay. I like where we're going with this. Okay, so I think that's all we really needed to do uh, for this lesson. We created the user control, used it as a data template, styled it up a little bit better, and it's looking great. There's, I think, only one step left, and that is to uh, to add in the um, uh, the state management for uh, the different uh, state triggers, adaptive triggers. So let's uh, tackle that in the last of the solution videos and see you in the next video. Thanks.